This is the most satisfying part of having a new soldering iron. What's up YouTube? So a lot of people have um, asked me about my charging leads that I use with the B6. A lot of people have got themselves a B6 and um, whether it be the AC model or the DC model, they've gotten themselves a B6 and they've got the leads that come with it out of the box and they've gone, okay, let's charge my battery. None of them fit. So where did I get my leads that I used in my video? Well, the simple answer to that that I tell everyone is I make my own. Um, obviously not everybody uh, knows how to make their own and I'm getting a lot of people asking me this question so uh, I'm going to show you how to make your own. Now there's a, a number of ways you can do this. Uh, depending on what your uh, charger came with uh, some of them I've because I've had about I don't know 20 of these B6 chargers in various different iterations some of them come with um, the Dean's connectors on them with uh, an array of different little leads that you can plug on with with Dean's connectors and some of them come with uh, XT60 connector here and then a, just a big wad of uh, pigtails of different connections that you can uh, choose on the other end. Now, uh, there's two. There's, there's a number of ways you can do this. Uh, in my case here, I've got the Dean's connector ones, and one of the things that I've done here, just a quick and dirty job that I did earlier on, was I actually um, put a. Uh, this is called a JST SM connector, which is what comes with your battery. So the JST SM connector is what you're looking for there um, and you want the one with the pins I guess you would call that the male the male end uh, and if you put it onto a Dean's connector you can then plug that into your Dean's connector and have that ready to go that's one way of doing it and then you keep your adapters and all that sort of thing but it does involve you either getting a Dean's connector or just taking one of the ones that you're not going to use, like this one for example, that uh, happens to be for a glow plug I believe, just take that one and you can basically thieve the Dean's connector off the end of that and terminate it with a JST SM. And if you've got any old uh, broken Gen 8 or early model blasters or whatever, uh, then you probably, I mean if you're anything like me, you have a bunch of this sort of thing lying around. Uh, I guess most of you aren't like me, but um, yeah, so like here's, this is off of an old Gen 8 uh, M4 or A1 by the looks of it. And um, let me just get these charges out of the way so you can see what's going on. And I'm just going to take this, take the battery plug off the end of it. Alright, so I'm just going to get this. You only need a short amount because um, generally the balance leads are quite short and you need to plug them into the charger as well so uh, always make an effort to clip one wire at a time uh, it's not an issue here because nothing's connected to this but I have seen people go oh yeah I'll just re-terminate this bam cut both the battery wires at the same time short the battery uh, melt the end off their cutters <laughs> and uh, potentially cause fires and unhappiness. So yeah, always just, just make an effort to cut one wire at a time. That's how I do it, and even if it's not connected to anything, it's just a good habit to be in. Uh, you don't want to, you know, burn more things than you want burnt in your life. So, I've just stripped off a little bit of the insulation, probably about five millimeters of insulation stripped off the end and what you can do um, you can take these leads that you've that you've 
that have come with your charger or ones that you've got from, um, I don't know, kicking around. These are, for what, what, what it's worth, these are a 4mm banana connector. Also the same as a 4mm bullet connector. So you see in the one in my, uh, that I used in my other video, it's just the actual bullets on the end of these that I use. And um, uh, I just basically solder the bullets to the end of that. And that is what I would generally do. Uh, if you have these leads and you want to use these leads, then you can cut these leads off and you can have yourself these bullets with some nice um, rubber bits to to hold on to when you're plugging them in and out. Just a word of warning, if you do like jump on eBay and buy yourself some of these, um, be aware, I have bought many of these and I have received batches like this one where the wires are a little bit skinnier and um, the uh, polarity is the wrong way around. If you can see here, this is black and red and this is red and black. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of confusing <laughs> sometimes. So just be aware. Um, don't always trust the colours that these are when they're manufactured because they might not necessarily suit your needs. So, uh, for today's purposes, I'm just going to cut these um, banana plugs off and I'm just going to strip them down as well. About the same amount. Now there's all sorts of um, theories behind soldering uh, mechanical connections versus uh, versus solder connections and all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to get into that too too deeply, but um, the way I like to do it is the way I've always done it, and um, I've I've never had a solder connection break. So um, yeah, I find that the, the solder itself is as good as a mechanical connection. Either way, people are going to argue with me doesn't matter, that's how I do it. Um, what I've done there is I've just slid on some heat shrink tubing and that is to insulate afterwards. Again, I've slid two pieces of black on because I've only got black tubing and I mean, I would usually put red on red and black on black but I don't have any red so it doesn't matter. It's only an insulator. Alright, so what I like to do with these is I just sort of push the wires together and sort of give them a bit of a twist like that just so there's a little bit of mechanical connection for those of you who are into that now I'll show you how to solder them. Heat up your soldering iron, which you should have, because if you don't have a soldering iron, what are you doing with your life? At this point, if you've got a set of helping hands in your uh, arsenal of tools, um, then that's nice. You can use them to uh, hold onto your wires for you. Clean your soldering iron tip off and just make sure that your uh, soldering iron is tinned, got a little bit of solder on the end of it. Now what you want to do is you want to apply the soldering iron to the wire with a little bit of solder on the tip. You're not actually putting solder onto the wires from the iron, you're just using the iron to heat the wire. And then when the wire is heated, you will then add solder from your soldering wire and let it flow into the join like that. Once that's done, you will grab your little piece of heat shrink tube, which you've already put on, push it over there 
and then grab your heat gun of course for which is attached to your soldering station because you bought one of these awesome soldering stations and just heat it up shrink it on beautiful lovely tell your mother um, just going to do the same thing with the other side now I did uh, remove the piece of heat shrink for the purposes of just making it easier uh, I'm just going to place that back on always remember to put it back on because it's a lot harder to put the piece of heat shrink on after you've made the join always remember that alright I'm just going to Okay, so apparently my SD card ran out of memory on that um, on that last solder join. But uh, once you've got your uh, connection like this, you can then pop it into the appropriate connectors on your charger. Put your balance lead into the appropriate plug. Uh, this is a 11 volt, so it's got the four pins, and then connect your JST SM connector, and of course you will select LiPo charge. I would put this maybe 0.8 of an amp for a regular charge, and of course this is going to be. 11 volts, 3S, and then you just hit go. Text batteries, confirmed. Awesome, off you go. And there you have it, simple, easy um, cable for charging your Gel Blaster batteries with your IMAX B6. Um, there's other ways of doing it, like I said, there's, there's a few other different ways that all end up with the same thing but I mean that's the that's the long and short of it that's the easiest way and usually what I do is I'll just grab whatever odds and ends I have and make up a cable to suit uh, whatever I need at the time so uh, for whatever reason um, for whatever reason my cable that I had in the last video isn't here, probably because I gave it to someone because they were like, oh, I don't have a charging cable for my B6 or something. Um, but yeah, I will put links down in the description to all the various bits that that you will need um, to do this. Uh, and as always, have fun. Peace.